The cats are going to fight. Okay. Hey. Psst. No fighting. Why are you fighting? Be nice. Be nice, please. Jeez. Anyways. Hey guys, it's Jenny and welcome back once again to Solid Gold. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own aquarium divider very easily and very quickly. So if you've ever bought a branded aquarium divider from a pet store, you probably very quickly realized your mistake because let's be honest, we all know they suck. They just do. They suck, okay? And sometimes it's just better to make your own of something. Usually the aquarium dividers that you can buy at the pet store, first of all, they come rolled up in a little tiny tube like this. So by the time you get them and you unroll them, they kind of won't stay flat and they kind of stay curved and tend not to stay in place in your aquarium. Making your own completely avoids that and it also lets you completely customize it to the size tank you have. I recently made one, for example, for my little five gallon Fluval spec tank, which has very abnormal dimensions for an aquarium. So it, it worked out perfectly fine because I was able to customize it exactly to the size of the tank and make it exactly the way I needed it to be. So this one's gonna be a little bit easier because I'm using a standard 10 gallon aquarium and I'm gonna need to make two dividers for this because as you guys know, if you saw my video, my last video, I suddenly find myself now with three little betta friends, whereas a couple weeks ago I had none. So <laughs> yeah, that happened. If you missed that video, by the way, there'll be a link to it somewhere over this video so go ahead and click on that and watch that if you want to see my new bettas but I'm just going to show you how to make one of the dividers that you saw in that video since I need to make a couple for the new tank anyways so the first thing you're going to need is this plastic canvas I chose the color black because the edging that I have is also black and the substrate I'm going to use in this tank is black so I think it'll blend in really nicely with everything else that's going into the tank but you can really use any color that this comes in. I've seen it in all sorts of different colors and it really is up to you what you wanna use. The second item you're gonna need are just some little suction cups. You can usually get a pack of several of these from the craft store. Um, they will probably come with little metal hooks on them, but they're very, very easy to pop off because you don't need the hook. All you need is the little suction cup to hold your divider in place once you're done making it. I only need to use suction cups up at the top of the divider, I find, because at the bottom, if you're using substrate, the substrate will help hold the divider in place too. So it's really helpful, just as a tip before we get started, if you are making your dividers in a bare aquarium that you haven't started setting up yet, because otherwise it just makes it a little more difficult. Not impossible, just a little more difficult. And the last thing you're gonna need are these report covers. Now this is what the package looks like. It's not the only brand that makes them. You can find these at most office supply stores, sometimes even at big box stores like Walmart or Target, but you don't actually need the full thing. All you need out of them are these plastic edge, the plastic edging part, the actual binding. And it has to be this very specific kind. It's the kind that you can slide your report or papers or whatever it is you're traditionally using this for into like so. And it just kind of pinches the papers and holds them in place. So really, really simple, and they're fairly easy to cut through with a normal scissors because you're gonna have to cut these down to the size of the aquarium that you're using. Um, unless I'm forgetting anything, and I don't think I am, that's all you need to make this. It really is super simple. I'm probably making it a lot more complicated with all my extra explanations than it really needs to be, but I just want this video to be really clear so that you can easily recreate this on your own at home. If you are a little bit like me and you're bad at the whole measuring twice and only cutting once thing, you can make it a little bit bigger than you think it's gonna need to be. And because you can always, obviously you can always trim a little bit more off, but you can't put more back on once you've cut it off. So that's the strategy that I use because even when I measure three times and cut once, I still end up making a mistake. So I measure a couple times, cut it a little bit bigger than I think it's gonna need to be, and then adjust as I go along. So. I'm just going to use the outside of the aquarium to see how 
I need to cut this and you can kind of, the glass on the 10 gallon aquariums is really, really thin and you can see like where the edge is. So just put it like slightly in from the very outer edge of the aquarium to make up for, to compensate. You know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. And keep in mind too, that by the time you put the edging on this divider, that's gonna add a little bit of length to the divider as well. So yeah, it's probably gonna be the kind of thing where you cut it once and then you make adjustments and cut it a little bit smaller as you go. That really is the best way to do this. And then you're gonna also wanna cut it so that it fits just under the lip of your aquarium. You don't want your divider to be right at the water level or even definitely not lower than where the water level is going to be because betta fish can jump. So you want it to come right up to the aquarium lid so that it's a nice tight fit and there's no way that the betta fish can jump over your divider into the next little area and harm one another because they will. If they, if they can find a way, they will do it. You will be adding some of this to the top and bottom of your divider too. It helps give it some extra stability. And um, so once you add that, that's gonna add some height to your divider too. Oh, hi, Grin, are you joining us? <laughs> Have you guys noticed that cats love empty aquariums? If there's an empty aquarium anywhere within eyesight, they must be sitting in it. Isn't that right, Grim? This is gonna be either the top or the bottom, doesn't really matter. And seeing where I'm gonna need to cut this. So I'm just gonna cut the end of this off. Hi, Palmer, are you gonna help us too? And if you don't have very strong scissors, okay. I guess I have strong enough scissors. Sammy's a little cranky tonight. I don't really know what's gotten into him. What's the matter, Sammy? So then here's one of the side edges going on. And that one might not need to be cut down at all. Um, it does a little bit. I'm just gonna cut off the top little corner there because it kind of sticks up a little bit. I'm gonna find little plastic pieces everywhere after this. That is looking pretty good. Let's put the top piece on though and see where that puts us. The height is still perfect. Is it possible that I got it just right the first time I cut it? All right, and then I'm gonna put on the other side, the final edge piece. So what this edging does is just kind of provide stability and support to your whole divider. And then the suction cups are gonna be what actually holds it in place. So it's a little bit too wide, I think. So I am gonna cut just one row of squares off of the plastic mesh and see if that does the trick. Are you playing, Grin? <laughs> He's running back and forth through the kitchen like really fast and chirping as he goes and we have a perfect fit. I'm gonna make one more, but I'm just doing this one for the example in this video. So it, as you can see, even without the suction cups, it fits in there really snugly and it's not going anywhere even when I'm moving the aquarium around. But you're still gonna wanna use suction cups just in case it gets knocked out of place and your fish are able to get past it and get to one another's side. So that's where these suction cups come in place. And you just put one on either side at the top of the divider. And it, it helps to kind of offset them a little bit so they don't run into one another and come unstuck. So there, now that's definitely not going anywhere. And I'm just gonna do the same on the back side as well. There we go. That's held in place. If you want to, for extra support, you can do the same thing down on the bottom of the divider on each side. But like I said earlier, I am not gonna do that because I'm using substrate in this tank. And what I've found is that the substrate helps hold it in place at the bottom. So yeah, there you go. 
very quick and simple, easy to do aquarium divider for your betta fish tank or any other fish that you might need a divider for. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Again, if you missed my video introducing my three new betta fish, go ahead and click the link in the description below that will bring you to that video. And that's about it for today. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay gold.